الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الأمين وصلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته كيف حالكم جميعا يا أيها الأكوى أكوى Okay, making sure that I'm at the right place, be it in the light, Tyler. on inshallah ta'ala uh, the topic today be ethna lahi ta'ala is that men are not meal tickets and women are not sex objects uh, at least in the light of al-islam and what we are taught in islam yes men are providers yes men are obligated and required by duty to provide uh, for the woman once there is a union likewise the woman is to beautify herself Um, for her husband um, however these are not the desire goals okay these are not the desire goals and we want to talk about that yes um, understanding the difference between provisions and providing as something that is duty based obligation or required but not something that is actually just sought after even though <clears throat> in marriage as we should come across those narrations that explains the different purposes why people seek out um, <clears throat> a mate and why people get married and some of the reasons they get married and we also should look at the prophetic advice on that issue <clears throat> Tell you, I want to start off with a simple hadith all right that she gives us some basics here the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says that from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiallahu ta'ala anhu that mentioned the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said dunya mata'un that the dunya is a place of enjoyment that the dunya is a place of enjoyment and he says wa khayru mata'un wa khayru mata'iha al-mar'atu saliha and the best things and the best of the things or the best enjoyment of the dunya is a righteous wife all right the best enjoyment of the dunya is a righteous wife um sheikh salaf taymin rahmatullah ta'ala alayhi commented on the statement of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam at dunya mata that the dunya is an enjoyment he explains here that meaning it is something that tamatta arbi is something wherein you can take pleasure you can take enjoyment from He says, كَمَا يَتَمَتَّعْ مُسَافِرَ بِزَادِهِ ثُمَّ يَنْتَهِ Just as a traveler um, can take some enjoyment in his provisions that he packs with him uh, until the end, until he runs out of that provision. So if a person is traveling, going somewhere, they might take some um, some things with them to help ease their journey. So they take some stuff that will help comfort them, like food, drink, and any different things that they might need on that journey. So just like they have those provisions and they enjoy from those provisions until those provisions actually run out, this is pretty much here is what he's saying. And the The Prophet ﷺ is in this hadith indicating to us that the best enjoyment that you can take within this dunya is having a righteous wife. All right, he says, إِذَا وَفَقَ إِنْسَانَ لِمْرَأَةٍ صَالِحَا فِي دِينِهَا وَعَقْلِهَا فَهَذَا خَيْرُ مَتَعُ الدُّنْيَا لِيَنَّهَا تَحْفَظُهُ فِيهِ سِرِّهِ وَمَالِهِ وَوَالَدِهِ right? And it's important. So the Prophet ﷺ here is telling us that if man is granted the tawfiq, okay, of having a righteous wife okay meaning 
that she is righteous within her deen, her practice of the deen, and her aqal, all right, in her intellect, and in her intelligence, فَهَذَا خَيْرُ مَتَعَ Then this is the best mata, enjoyment of the dunya. Why? Because a woman with such a trait who is righteous within her deen, meaning her practice and adherence of it, as well as in her intellect, she is the type of woman that's going to do what? She's the woman that's going to guard his secrets, guard his wealth, and his children. She is the one who's going to preserve his secrets, his wealth, and his children. Now, interestingly enough, the reason why I started with this hadith, I want you to understand something. The Prophet wasallam did not mention anything of the physical attributes of this particular woman. The Prophet wasallam did not mention anything about attraction. And we know that attraction plays a part in relationships. But the Prophet wasallam did not mention any of those things when he mentioned the best type of enjoyment that you can have in the dunya is a mara'atul saliha, right? And Shaykh Thaymeen, rahmatullah ta'ala, that he understood from the mara'atul saliha, the righteous wife, he doesn't mention physical beauty neither. What he mentions and what he understands from it is that the woman is saliha, she is righteous within her deen and her inheritance of the deen and the practice of the deen and in her aqal. All right? So if she have these traits, she is the one who is going to be able to do what? She is going to be one to be able to preserve his secrets. She's not going to spread the bedroom secrets, the household secrets. She's not going to go around and tell everybody what's going on. She's also going to be the one who's going to preserve his wealth, all right, as well as his children. Now, if it was just about physical beauty and it was just about a woman who was fleshy or a woman who was really attractive, she may or may not have these qualities and she may or may not be that mora'atul saliha so just because she might have the attraction doesn't mean that she's going to follow through or follow suit with all of these different attributes so this is why we mention that women aren't sex objects in al-islam that's not what is to be understood women aren't sex objects okay just like men are in meal tickets Men are providers, but that's a requirement and a duty and obligation. We should get into that as well. But I just wanted to start off with this hadith just to show you that Islam does not look at women like a sex object. Okay, It's talking about a certain caliber of woman, not just any woman. It's talking about a woman that um, possesses certain type of traits so that she would be the best partner or spouse that you can have in the dunya, especially in that union or that relationship that you have. Tell you. Shikr Tameen continues. He says, well, can a fil If it be the case that this woman is sali within her aql, meaning that she has a please. Now, here is the attraction part. Okay? But it's not just physical attraction. Because if you have an upright wife, as Shikr Tameen is going to explain a little bit later, but if you have an upright wife, and even if she's not the most beautiful woman physically, She's going to become beautiful to you via her character, via her intellect, via her righteousness, via her adherence into the deen. She's going, she should be beautiful to you in those regards. Um, if you are on your situation, if you're supposed to be adhering to your deen, that this is, you should be appealing to this. Um, here he mentions that she, when you look at it, he's going to be what? He's going to be pleased. He's going to be happy with her. If, and, and if he's absent from her, she's going to do what? He's going to preserve his... His honor, his his wealth, his his secrets, his children, etc. When wakala iliha lam and if he entrusts her with something, she's not going to betray that trust. All right, he says, فهذه المرأة هي خير متاع الدنيا. He said, then this woman with these qualities is the best type of enjoyment to have in the dunya. Not any woman, not any woman, not any woman because she looked beautiful, not because a woman went and got some um, some body work done to her body as what the trend is now. When you look on social media and different stuff, this is the trend. The trend is to go get surgery done to your body, look at the best, be the best sex object you can be. But that don't actually necessitate what qualities that you actually possess. That don't say that you are a woman of high standard. That don't say that you're a woman of redeeming qualities. All let's just say is that you are an object. You have made yourself an object. And you are targeting or specificing certain things because you want to look beautiful and attractive for a spouse now and a Muslima she wants to look attractive for the husband she's with alright 
not like how the trend we do. And we do it often because it's, it's crazy and it's how it is. Sometimes there's a psychological thing that is being taken effect is that the woman to get married and then she wants to look beautiful when she goes outside the house, but not beautiful for the person in the house she's married to, which cause a lot of problems within the marriage that we don't want to recognize. Same thing with the husband. The husband should not want to look good and beautiful outside the house. He should also want to look beautiful inside the house as well for the wife because both should want to please and appease the other, even in a physical manner, okay? This doesn't contradict the concept that a woman is not a sex object, okay? And we're not saying that attract, attraction doesn't hold no weight in Islam. Well, he has the call of Nabi. He says, for this reason, the Prophet وسلم, is stated in the famous hadith that we all heard before, that women are married for four. And he was mentioning this to the companion saying that you marry women for four reasons, okay? Not that women should be married for these four reasons, okay? The ulama doesn't explain it like that. He meaning that you marry women for four reasons and then he gives you his advice within the hadith. Not that women should be married for these four reasons, okay? He's saying that you marry women for these reasons, these four reasons. And we all know the hadith, he says, Limaliha, due to her wealth. Wahisabi have, all right? Due to her status, her lineage, okay? Do she come from good stock? You know what I'm saying? Do she come from a good family? Okay? Uh what Jimali had due to her attraction, her beauty. All right. Um what Dini had and due to her deen. Now listen what the Prophet says. Out of all of the four things he mentioned, the only one he um actually agrees with <laughs> is the last one. He says, Father be that to Deen Yadek. So choose the one with the deen, or may your hand be covered in dust. All right? Shaykh Uthameen says, يَعْنِي عَلَيْكَ بِهَا فَإِنَّهَا خَيْرَ مَنْ يَتَزَوَّجُهُ إِنسَانِ For that to be deen, وَإِنْ كَانَ غَيْرَ جَمِيلَ الصُّورَ لَكِنْ يَجْمَ بِجَمِيلِهَا خُلْقِ He says, خُلْقِهَا خُلْقَهَا وَدِينَهَا So here he mentioned that what is upon you in regards to seeking out women in marriage is that you want to seek out the one that have deen, right? Because if she's the best one for you to marry, for that man to marry, right? She said, then he should seek the one who possesses the deen. And if she, even if the case is she's not beautiful physically, he says, when can a guy to Jamila to Sora, even if she's not beautiful physically, she doesn't have a, a, um, a, a beautiful um, physique. For, so to speak Or she doesn't look So very much appealing Physically Right This is what Shikrati Mina is saying Like can Be Jamaliha However she's beautiful Due to what Can he uh, He says She's beautiful By way of her character By way of her deen Then this is the one That you want to Actually seek out Alright Again A lot of individuals and, and then this is a sad state As we put up the post That a lot of relationships are doomed because of the fact that women only see men as a meal ticket or what we marrying in that pocket. So we dealing with this person because of what he might have. And men only see that woman is because we dealing with her based on her body. And this is not the correct stance of Islam. And I know a lot of people say, well, Islam talks about that. The men supposed to provide for the woman. That's a requirement. I hear you. But we're going to talk about what that means. Likewise, women supposed to be attractive. This is a, we're going to have we, we're, we're touching on these issues so that we can have a better understanding in the light of Islam. It's not the case. The actual post was mentioning that if you're seeking out a man just for what he has in his pocket, not the other qualities that the man's supposed to possess, then it's doomed. If you're seeking out a woman only for her physical physique and you're not worrying about any other qualities or characteristics that she should have, then it's doomed. If this is the case that you're only worrying about, then you're doomed. The relationship is doomed. It's not going to last. Do you understand? Because that's not substance. And this is what Islam is teaching us, that we must look for substance, not just what a woman can, uh, a beautiful woman or looking for a man who has money. We must look for substance. All right. A man can have money, but does not fulfill his obligations. A man can have money and chose not to spend on you. All right. A man can have money and chose to use that in a tyrannical way. OK, lure things over you, beat you, OK, abuse you. And say, look, I hold all of the power because I can take care of you. All of these things can happen. But if he doesn't have certain qualities to go along with having that money, then it becomes a problem. So this is the reason why we need to understand what's important here. All right. Dealing with the haqqo zoja al I wanted to touch on this issue so we can get a better understanding. 
provisions a man providing is not just restricted to finance, even though that's one of his obligations. It's a requirement and a duty upon the man according to his means to maintain, you understand this now, to bring stability, okay, to bring security, to bring a comfortable stability and security situation within the relationship, he has to have certain things, finance, other things he have to provide as well. Okay, he had to provide guidance. Okay, he had to provide safety, security. He had to provide leadership, which is also a part of guidance. He had to provide stability, not just financially, but he should also do it emotionally and mentally. He should be able to deal with certain things. This is why he had need to have what they call hosnu tasarruf. Okay, he needs to know how to manage um, um, manage the affairs in the proper manner. These different things he should have because this all goes along with what he's supposed to provide. And this is a requirement now. This is a duty. This is not the object or the gold. Okay. And this is why it's important we need to understand that. When the Prophet Sallallahu told the guardians what should a woman look for, what told the guardians what they should look for to marry off these women to these men, he did not mention money. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned deen and good character. He did not mention money. He mentioned Dean and good character, okay? Even though we know that finances is an obligation of the man, the Prophet did not mention that as a means to marry. He says, what? You marry them off if they got good Dean? I mean, marry off if they got Dean and good character because these are the pivotal points that's going to help administer that money and that finance in the correct way. So Allah Jalla Wala says in the Quran, Ar-Rijalu kawwamuna ala nisa bima faddala Allahum all right, and this beautiful hadith, I mean, beautiful ayat, and Surah so Nisa. Allah Jalla says that the men are the protectors, maintainers of the woman, due to what Allah has preferred. Um, Allahu meaning Allah has preferred them over others. Uh, and due to that which they provide or spend from their wells on them. Okay, there is a hadith that the Messenger of Allah he says, إِذَا دَعَ الرَّجُلُ مْرَعَةً إِلَى فِرَاشِهِ فَلَمْ تَأْتِهِ فَبَاتَ غَطْبَانٍ عَلِيهَا لَعْنَ He says, لَعْنَتُهَا He says, لَعْنَتْ لَعْنَتْهَا الْمَلَائِكَةُ حَتَّى تُسْبِحْ مُتَّفِقٌ عَلَيْهِ This hadith is collected by Bukhari and Muslim from the hadith of Bukhariya who mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ said that when a man calls his wife to the bed meaning to have relationship with her and she refuses to come she does not come and he goes to sleep angry with her displeased with her then the angels will curse her until the morning now I need you to understand the correlations between the verse and this hadith okay because now we're still talking about requirements and duties and obligations so you can understand Okay, now the man is obligated and required to provide for that woman, to provide the security, protection, the guidance, the leadership, all of that, etc. Not just money, but all of that. So, a part of the union that's a duty, that's not an option. She don't have an option whether or not she wants to uh, please her husband or not. No, the union brings about a duty. What makes her body and that what she has permissible for her husband is the fact of the union and certain requisites having if he gives up the mahar and he marries her and he gives her the compensation she now become legally for him but this is a legal obligation upon her just like it's a legal obligation upon him that he have to provide for her we need to understand things in islam and how it's actually read so you can see the correlation between both the the hadith and the ayat okay so you wonder why Imam Nawi would bring this hadith. Why would he bring this hadith about if a man invites his wife and she refuses exactly, and didn't bring the ayat in the beginning? To show you that there are certain responsibilities and obligations upon each party. All right? No, it ain't just you just marry the man, he provides for you, and you don't do nothing. No, you have to have an obligation to please that man. So we're showing the qualities, not the objective. Okay? Again, this is not the objective. All right? And a lot of times we, we forget that. Okay, type. Um, Shaykh Tamim, rahmatullah ta'ala alayhi, he, he touches on this. He, he says, uh, He mentions that, first and foremost, for us to understand, 
And I hope I didn't skip over some of the points I want to make. Yeah. Right. He says this. He says, Thumma bayana sabab hadhi al qawama wa walaya alati jaalaha Allahu subhanahu wa taala. All right. He says then the after meaning Imam Nawawi, he mentions some of the causes for this qawama. Okay. This qawama and this walaya, this guardianship, this this maintenance, this protection. Um, he mentioned some of the reasons for that. Okay. بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض حيث فضل الرجل على مرأة في العقل والدين وقدرة وقوة وغير ذلك. All right. Now, Sheikh Dimi mentioned that some of the reasons why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala have given man the position of being a qawam. All right, and having the walaya, the guardianship over the woman, and some of those reasons is due to the fact that men has been preferred and been given the virtue over the woman in terms of intellect, in terms of deen, in terms of qudra, ability, in terms of strength, and other than that, from those um, aspects of virtues that Allah has preferred them. adl, and we know that the Islamic legislation, all of it is just. Each person has been given what is deserved, what is deserved, required due to its virtue. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have preferred men over women, then indeed that makes the men the qawam. Okay, makes them the maintainers and the ones who are in charge over the woman. And regarding this, it is not known the true extent of the virtue as far as the class, human the men as a class now, as a whole. We're not talking about one man versus one woman. We're talking about men in general as a whole over women. All right, the ulama explains that we're not talking about when it comes to one man versus one woman, because one woman, when it comes to one man, a woman can actually have certain qualities over that man. But when we're talking about men as a whole and we're talking about women as a whole, then men has been preferred by Allah Jalla as a whole. OK, that's not as something done as, as we said, on an individual basis. OK, so don't misunderstand or misconstrue that. OK, tight. Now. It becomes clear here that this is the responsibility because of these reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given men as a whole these um, certain responsibilities and obligations over the woman, okay? Now, I want to ask you this, okay? Before we even get to wealth, because it, notice he did not touch on wealth yet, okay? He did not touch on wealth yet, okay? And even though Allah says, what? Bima anfaqu min anwalihim, due to what they spend out of their provisions for them. Okay? Men are not seen as meal tickets. It is their obligation to provide for that woman. Okay? Not just give her money to go on a shopping spree, but to make sure that she is maintained on each level. And what do I mean by each level? He must make sure she's maintained on a spiritual level. So that means he must educate her. Or if he is not in the ability to educate her, he must provide her with the means whereby she can be educated. Do you not understand this? He must educate her. So not just provide for her, you know, uh, on a physical basis. On You know, he have to provide for her spiritually. He have to provide for her mentally. If she's going through mental challenges and mental problems that she has, he should want to get down to the bottom of that. He should aid her and be able to help her out in those regards. Either uh, if he's going to use therapeutic methods, if, if he's extensive in Islam and how Islam deals with those issues, or if he's not, he should provide and help her in regards to deal with her, ment her mental. This is all a part of his obligation now. You understand the provisions that he wants to provide, not just money. Okay. Also, he's supposed to provide for whatever level he's supposed to provide for. And then he's supposed to provide for on a physical level. That physical level cover certain things far as fulfilling the obligation of pleasing her. Yes, a man's supposed to please his wife. Also, a part of that, he's supposed to bring about shelter. A man's supposed to shelter the wife to make sure she lives um, and she is living not on the streets, but she lives within uh, a, a nice a nice place enough that she can feel comfortable because he's shelter. He provides her shelter. He also provides her food, drink, all right? Things that she needs from her basic enmities. All of this is on the shoulder of the man due to the union, okay? This is a requirement and obligation that the man has, 
All right. No, he again, he's not just a meal ticket, meaning that, you know, I got this guy. He got bread. I'm going to get him to give me whatever I want. Blah, blah, blah. And this is all I'm seeking from. No, because if he don't have those other qualities that we're talking about, he don't have husn of tasarruf. He doesn't have um, the, the quwa, right, that he's supposed to have. He's not strong within the qawam. He doesn't have he die and all that thing. Then he's going to skip past all those other things to teach you, all those other things that you're supposed to have. Allah has made it an obligation upon the man to save himself and his family from the hellfire. That's what the verse says. Save yourself. Cool. And fusakum wa'alikum No, right? Save yourself and your family from the hellfire. So if that's the case, he need to have knowledge. He had to have ilm. How can he save himself and his family from the hellfire if he don't have no ilm? How can he do that if he don't have and cannot provide? So all of these things have to come into play when we're talking about men and what they're supposed to do in their responsibilities and requirements versus women and what they should look for in a man. Do you understand that? And this is why, again, in Islam, Allah did not, I mean, the Prophet ﷺ did not leave it up to the woman to search out a mate. And I have plenty of classes on that. You can go back to that, uh, take that position. Um, and I bring the kalam from the ulama, um, Sheikh Thameen, explain, we, we, we will go with sword north, the verses and stuff, so you have the understanding of that. It is the guardian's jobs to search out a mate for the woman. It's not on the woman to search out. You might say, well, is it permissible for a woman to propose to a man? Yes, it's permissible for a woman to propose to a man. All right. <laughs> As far as to the details of that, this is not the time to go into all of that. But yes, it is permissible that a woman can propose to a man. But still at the same time, a guardian should be the one who is the liaison between the two because the guardian, as a being a male, is going to know what to look for in that male. Do you understand? And certain things is going to be able to detect. A woman sometimes won't be able to do that. All right. Okay. Now, a man... Uh, just to just so we get to understand, so we can understand where we at. A man is not a mill ticket. For those who understand that a man's supposed to provide, that's true. You might say, well, that's him being a mill ticket. He's supposed to provide. No, but we just got to finish explaining what he's supposed to provide. Not just it's not just finance. It's not a you know I get this off of him because of that. No, there's obligations on both sides. This is why it's called hukuk. All right. There are rights that are shared on both sides. There are responsibilities and duties on both sides. Once that union becomes legitified within Islam, then there is responsibilities that the woman must do and there's responsibilities that the men must fulfill. All right. And it does not just work as the man being the one. Oh, he's going to buy you the home. He's going to give you the ring. He's going to buy you the car. He's going to give you all of the things that your heart desire. No, it don't work that way. All right. That man must maintain you on many, many levels. And we explained that he must maintain you spiritually. And a lot of men are not spiritual themselves. A lot of men is not even seeking ilm on that level. <laughs> right. Just, just, be, just, just keep it a being. Right. And if a lot of men are materialistic and they're not worrying about those type of things, they're not caring whether or not your hellfire is safe. Are you safe in the hellfire or not? So it's not just being a meal ticket. No, yeah, men are supposed to provide for a woman, but he's supposed to provide multiple things, not just finance. He's supposed to provide multiple things. So when you keep thinking that a man is just a meal ticket for a woman, that's incorrect. In Islam, that's not how it's understood. The Prophet Sallallahu he mentioned it clear. He told the guardians, you marry the man who deen and character please you, not his finance. You marry the man who deen and character please you. Why didn't he mention finance? Why he didn't mention finance? Because it's already understood as a requirement and as a duty and obligation he's supposed to provide for his family. But if he don't have the deen and he don't have the understanding of that deen and the inheritance of the deen and he don't have good character, he's not going to administrate the correct um, uh, the correct measurement, the correct uh, um, applying, tatbik, application of how to actually take care of that woman. He's not going to do it. It's not going to happen. Do you understand? All right, so that's why it's, it's a problem when you say that men are only meal tickets. That's a problem. We don't believe that. All right, men are way more than uh, are meal tickets in Islam. And that's why we're going over these verses so we can get a better understanding. Now, if you notice in this verse, I just want to mention, remember the Sheikh mean mentioned there are several reasons why Kawama and Walaya. Because sometimes we quote this verse and we think this verse is just talking about finance. It's not. Allah says, Ar-Rijalu Kawamuna ala nisa. So Kawam incorporates, and for those who don't understand, the Kawam has many meanings. And in English, we sometimes say a maintainer, right? But when you look in the noble, it got parentheses in there. So you can get a broader understanding. 
maintainer, protector, caregiver, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So you can try to get a poor understanding when you look into the tafsir of the verse, all right? Also, it has what we call walaya. So he's not just a maintainer, money-wise. He's a walaya. He's a guardian. Your husband is your guardian. Once you get married, your husband becomes your guardian. He has to look out for your safety. He has to look out for your well-being. He has to look out for all of these different things. These are the things that becomes a part of responsibility on him that he now has to worry about. He has to take on that task. You see, this is why it's not just a trade of physical attraction versus money. That's not what the Islamic marriage is. It reduces the significance and the status of of the Islamic marriage and union when we only boil you it down to money versus physical attraction. Money has plays a part in Islam and in a marriage. And physical attraction plays a part in Islam and in marriage. But we just went over the hadith. The Prophet said you marry women for four reasons. Which one did the Prophet tell us to pick? The one with Deen. What did the, what the Sheikh of Tamim says about that? Even if the woman is not physically attractive, you're not physically attracted to the woman, you will become attracted to her via her character and her Deen. This is why that's not the object. We can't think like that. Some Western kind of understanding. It's not from an Islamic point of view. We don't think like that. Yes, we want a beautiful woman. Who doesn't? Any man would want someone beautiful. Yes, you want a handsome man. Who don't? Any woman want a handsome man. But what would you rather take? You rather take a handsome man with no Deen? No good character, no fear of Allah. You want that handsome man? Or would you have to take a beautiful woman? No dean, no character, right? No fear of Allah. Or you have to take that? Or would you have to take a woman who fears Allah? Or would you have to take a man who is handsome, a, a man who fears Allah, even though he might not be the most handsome of men? Think about it. The right intelligent, the believer is going to choose the latter. Okay? Yes, you're looking for someone that pleases you in the eye. That's, that's true. We have hadiths on that. Did you get a good look at her? We know that. But that's not the object in Islam. I want to mention something else, bi'ithnillah, to give us a more understanding, inshallah, of this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful understanding of the deen, and that men are not milk tickers and women are not uh, sexual objects. There's more to that. Allah has raised a status. And I'm going to give you to this in the hadith here. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from uh, what has reported from Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu ta'ala anhuma that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said kullukum ra'in pay attention now wa kullukum mas'oolun an ra'atihi ra'atihi right the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said all of you the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said all of you are shepherds okay and each of you have a responsibility for his flock what is this hadith signifying to us off the bat we're going to go over the explanation of Shaykh Taymi. So I don't want you to think I'm just coming off my head. It's telling you that there is ob there's responsibilities here. There are requirements and duties, okay? So it ain't just physical attraction meets money. No, there's responsibilities within that union, okay? There's responsibility. And, and I love this hadith because this hadith is going to go down on the responsibility that is shared by everyone. It's not just shared by the man. The man ain't the only one who got responsibilities here. The Prophet is going to go down a list of everyone who has responsibilities. Everyone who has duties and requirements that they have to have. Right? So this, this becomes clear. Shaykh Uthameen, rahmatullah ta'ala, alayhi comment on the hadith. He says that, Al-Kitab al-Umma jami'a yubayna fihi Rasulullah sallam anna kulla insan ra'i al-mas'ula an ra'iti wa ra'i huwa ladhi yakumu ala شَيْءٍ وَيُرْعَى مُصَالِحِ فَحَيِّ أَنْ لَهُ وَيُرْعَى مَفَاسِدِهُ فَيَجِنُهُ وَإِيَّاهَا Right? So pay attention now. He's saying that in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ is addressing all of the ummah. He's not just addressing one person or a group specific. He's addressing everyone of the ummah in this particular hadith. And he clarifies and he explains within this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ is that every person is, every man is a shepherd and he's going to be responsible for his flock. Meaning the ra'i. What is the shepherd? What is the ra'i here? The ra'i is the one who يَكُمُ عَلَى شَيْمُ وَيَرَعِي مُصَالِهِ He is the one who is going to do what? He is going to be the one who is going to be over the affairs of something and he's going to look for what? What is he going to look for? He's going to observe the benefits, the rectification, the things that are suitable for that thing, for that which he have um, this um, uh, this 
responsibility or requirement or duty over. He has to make sure that they are sound. They are safe. They are secure. They are rectified. Well, you are facet. Also, he looked for things that can harm them. Things that are mafasid, things that are, can be corrupt or can corrupt them. Things that can hurt them, harm them. He have to also be observing of that. He have to also be observing of that. So see how it's not boiled down to just being a meal ticket? <laughs> you got money, okay. A woman looking for a man for money, okay. You looking for physical attraction, yeah, just more than that. It ain't just that. It's more than that. You see that? Because now you have to worry about whether or not that woman is getting involved in things she ain't supposed to be getting involved in that can harm her. Now, harming her plays multiple roles because in Islam, we have to worry about two things. Well, more than just two things. But you have to understand that in Islam, it's not just the body. It is the what? It is the spiritual. And the spiritual <laughs> actually includes the heart. It actually includes that aqal. Okay? <laughs> you understand? Not just the body. So you have to worry about there's not things that's harming her spiritually as well as not things that's harming her physically making sure she's not causing no harm to herself or to others this is your job you thought your job was to come in and just because you got a good salary or because you get a couple of dollars you get you a banging woman she dress up we play dress up we go take trips and you know we flick it up for the gram and you know what we a power couple there ain't no power couple that's not a power couple in this land do you understand that's not a power couple all you did become is barbie and ken that's all you became we, you know, we a photography couple. We, we want to show off and show people that this is what we do. No. There are certain obligations and responsibilities each you have that you have to strive hard and diligently, diligently to be able to fulfill them. And there's going to be days where both of y'all are going to fall short on that mark. There are going to be days where we are not going to want to do it. It's going to be days where things are going to be slighted. But guess what? Who have to hold everything together? That man, not just his money. All right? Not just his money. Because Allah can test that man and he lose his money. But do the woman leave because the woman because the man lose the money? No. If you have a righteous wife, she's gonna understand. She's gonna deal with if you're going through some hardship because the economy fluctuates. The economy doesn't remain on an all time high. We know that. We understand what we're going through now, a depression. Whether you want to understand it or not, <laughs> you go better go to the financial guru and you understand. The economists and they explain to you. All right, that's why things in the market, you look at the food is going up high. All right. Even in Walmart, foods are going up high. You have to pay attention. That's economy. So, again, that man need to make sure that she is taken care of on the level spiritually as well as physically and different things. Mentally, emotionally, want to make sure she is OK, especially if a law provide them with children, because now that is going to directly trickle down to the children. OK, so it's way much more, man. And you reduce it when you say a man is just a meal ticket. You reduce it, man. You take away all of this beautiful stuff that Islam actually um, adheres to and pushes to when you reduce it down that a man is a meal ticket or a woman just a physical attraction, uh, a sexual object. You reduce it, man. You take away all the beauty. So look what Shikrit Amini says here. He says, uh, So just like a shepherd, would, what does a shepherd do? A shepherd makes sure that he is going to look for a place whereas they can actually um nourish from he's going to make sure that his flock can nourish from that place so this is a good this is a good place here that they can actually eat from and and nourish and take things from had to get to bugonam elay into the point where the uh sheep or the the, the flock or the shock of sheep they referring back to him when the fulamakan and he also looks out for places where it's not good for them to actually go at and, 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 and graze from because that's not going to be good for them. So he makes sure they don't make that mistake of going there. So he takes them to places where they can. So this is normally how it is. And if anyone knows from the prophetic history is that all of the prophets pretty much were shepherds, okay? And it's, it's, it's history and it's wit, I mean, it's hikmah in that. And the ulama have many explanations on those, uh, on those ahadiths and those traits of the Prophet ﷺ being from the, um, from the, uh, being shepherds. هَكَذَا بَانِي آدَمْ كُلُّ إِنْسَانُ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّ مَسْؤُولَ عَنْ رَاعْتِهِ فَأَمِيرُ رَاعٍ وَمَسْؤُولَ عَنْ رَاعْتِهِ So he says, likewise, the children of Adam, each man is a shepherd and each one have a responsibility over his flock, like the leader or the commander of the country or like an emir, a president, whatever, you know, um, of 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 the country, he had to be responsible for his flock. All right. 
So he talks about the different types of leadership. So sometimes you might have a person who is a leader of just a small village, right? Um, and you might have who's a leader of a pre of a country, and you might have who's a leader of just an army, who a leader of this. So it's different type responsibilities. They differ in regards to what the responsibility actually is, but in regards if they in any type of leadership role or that type of role, they still have to be responsible for those who are under them. Okay, so I hope we get the gist of that. He says, um, he says here, he says for Ra'a to know what. He says, so when it comes to this type of uh, shepherd, then we have to understand that it varies. And we just talked about that. It varies. So it varies on, in regards and degrees to what's the responsibility going to be, whether the responsibility is going to be great or whether it's going to actually be less. And it's not going to be loud. For this reason, the Prophet ﷺ says, He says that the Amir, the Amir is a Ra'in. Ya'ani huwa mas'ulu an ratiyatihi. Ar-raju Ra'in lakin ratihi mahsura. Like he says, Shaykh Uthameen says here, meaning that the man, he is a Ra'in. He is a shepherd. But however, his um, his responsibility, right? His flock is going to be limited. It's not going to be a big big flock like how it would be if a person who is a, a leader of a country or a, a, a village or something like that. Well, huwa Ra'in fi ahli bayt. He is responsible and in control of his Household, and who is in this household? Meaning his wife, she's under his flock. Meaning his children, his sons, he's under his flock. And if he is blessed with daughters, his daughters under his flock. Meaning fi uktihi, his sister, his 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 aunt, and his both his maternal and his paternal aunts. All right, kullu min fi beti. Everyone who is in his household or in his household is under his yani um under his flock. Who raa'an fi ahli beti masula an raa'itihi. Yajibu alihi an yura yura hum ahsanu yaya li anhu masula anhu. And this is why it's important that we need to understand is a lot of times men and women especially in the muslim communities we get married and we don't understand what all of that entails we keep thinking it's like a boyfriend and a girlfriend type of thing it's not it's way deeper than that and so we go back home and you know we, we you know we have the walima and and we have all these different things and we like okay a month or two later we can't agree certain things going to happen differences is going to rise right so this is not and then six months later we back at the match and this ain't working and that ain't working and this ain't working and that ain't working because we don't understand the grave uh responsibilities that are placed on each person now when you get married you have to understand that the community starts from a Husband and a wife, a mother and a father. All right. Even if you don't have children, you still plays a major role in being a community. It's definitely something serious. It's not something that you can just, oh, we got married and we're just gonna have lots of playtime with each other. I'm gonna have relations with her. She relates to me and everything. We will. No, it's not gonna be that. It's gonna be times that y'all ain't gonna be able to stand each other. Not based just off the fact you can't, but it's just because things are in life comes up, and so y'all have to actually do it. But if y'all don't have a leadership role in it, y'all both can't play leader. Both of y'all can't play leader. You can't say I want the man to be the one who provide everything, but I'm not going to respect the ayat that gives him the position to be one who is the provider at the same time because I'm not going to respect his opinions. You can't do that. That's not a part of it. So either he's the one who's going to be the breadwinner, he's the one who's going to pull in the bread and do this and that, then he also got to be the one who take the leadership. He has to take the reins. You got to give him the, the driving seat. If you don't want to give him the driving seat, then you misunderstand and misconstrue that. And a lot of times, this is what happened. And then we have outside influences. We have people from whether they're friends or whether they're cousins or whether they're mothers, mothers-in-laws, or whether they're all people giving in their input of how this relationship should actually go, which might harm the relationship because there are conditions even before you even um, include someone into the affairs of your marriage. There are conditions. Islam covers that. And interestingly enough, this condition is actually understood in the verse comes after this verse that we're talking about. That verse, right? <laughs> so it's the 35th verse. This is the, that's the 34th verse. The 35th verse also that talks about having a hakam. And we have class, we, I mean, we did classes on the tafsir of the, those verses and the conditions also that need to be met before you go and tell somebody or confine somebody about what goes on in your marriage. All right. Um, also, again, so you have to understand that this is a responsibility now and it's grave. Once she becomes your wife, she has to know her responsibilities. Just like when he becomes your husband, all right, he has to know his responsibilities. And then y'all both need to know what's shared between y'all because this is what's going to bring the stability and all of that between your relationship. You're not going to bring the stability. He's not going to bring the stability on his own. 
His money will not bring the stability, okay? Your physical beauty will not bring the stability because you can be physically attractive, but you can be dumb. And that's just true. You can be beautiful, but you can be dumb. And what do I mean by you can be dumb? You can be unintelligent. You don't know your dean. You don't know what your Lord commands of you. You don't know this, this, and that. So you don't guard your prayer, which is a telltale sign for each one of you. If the man doesn't guard his prayer, if the woman doesn't guard his prayer, they are not, they are not equally yoked. They're not suitable for each other, period. And we don't understand that. If the woman doesn't guard her prayer, then she's not a good woman for you. If a man doesn't guard his prayer, then he's not a good man for you. That's suitable, not because he has money. Do you understand the difference now? We're talking about dean-wise versus anything else. If the man doesn't pray, he definitely ain't going to take care of you in the way that you want to be taken care of because he doesn't care. All right? And we know that there's nothing that the companions have unanimously agreed that anyone leave off as a calf or accepted prayer. All right? <laughs> so you have to understand that. This is important, man. We don't be understanding these issues. We just jump into these marriages and relationships and then this master is filled up with all these stories. Well, because people don't take things serious. So he says here... Um, Continued under that. He says, All right. And he has to worry about, he has to make sure that those under his flock are being taken care of and that they are not destroying or being destroyed or that they are being taken care of suitably. This is his job. He has to make sure things are running smoothly, not just financially. Okay, he want to check on them mentally. He want to check on them spiritually. He want to make sure they doing what they're supposed to be doing so that he can keep a lid on things. Do you understand? This is his responsibility. And we don't get that. We have we have Athars where Abdullah ibn Umar, Ta'ala he followed his wife one night. Right? One night he followed his wife and jumped out in the bushes on her. To prove a point. And you might say this is stalking behavior, right? <laughs> Look how foolish we might be. This wasn't stalking behavior. He did this, and alhamdulillah, it rectified her situations. He was explaining to her that a woman is not allowed to travel without a mahram, especially at nighttime, all right? So he jumps out on her in the bush to clarify to her that it's not safe for you to be traveling by yourself, all right? You're getting this notion in your head that you can do this, you can do that. No, you cannot. So we need to understand certain things. And this was him taking care of his flock. This Adar shows that he was taking care of his flock. He was making sure that she don't put herself in harm's way. That's even down to what she wear. I can wear whatever I want. No, you can't. If your husband, your husband's job and duty is to make sure when you go outside that house, you go out presentable and that you wear it correctly. And it's your job if you're going, if you're obligated to, because it becomes an obligation, it's an obligation that you have to wear hijab, you have to wear this, then you have to know what hijab you can wear and what you cannot wear. You have to know how it is, the rules and regulations to that. And if you don't understand that, then you need to educate yourself or allow your husband to educate. We're contending with each other. We get married and we want all of the finer things that come with it. You go to the master and you want to tell the master how this bill got shut off or how he's not doing this or how he's not doing that. But you don't go to the master and how he was telling you that you have to pray. You don't go to the master and tell you how he was telling you you couldn't hang around this person or how you have to dress or that you cannot interact with male co-workers, that you can't be buddy-buddy. There's no work husbands. You don't go to the master and tell all of that story. You go to the master and you want to tell a story of how he's not doing this and he's not doing that. You're missing the mark. You're missing the whole entire mark. There is a, what's the word I'm looking for? There's a patriarch, if I'm saying it correctly, that there has to be a leader within that domain. And that responsibility go to that man. It don't go to you. It goes to the man. And you need to respect them on that premises. And now we see the reason why the Prophet ﷺ said marry the woman with Dean. Not marry the one who got big boobs, good flesh, she look real good, she's attractive because she can be dumb as a brick and she can cause you more harm than she can cause you benefit. Think about that. Because a woman with Dean is going to understand and respect you based off of what Allah has laid down. A woman without Dean don't care about that. Alright? She don't care about that. And that's important for you to understand. And that's why we have a lot of problems because a lot of people don't know. Our baby's in Islam. Let's finish this up. Shaykh Tabin continues. He says, Likewise, the woman have a responsibility. She's a, she's a shepherdess over her, the, the husband's house. Okay, so what is the, this the responsibilities that she has? Okay, what is incumbent upon her is that she has to advise the household. She has to administer dealing with the cooking. Oh, I don't want to cook. Y'all want to hear this, right? This is this is this is definitely backwards towards the feminine movement. 
And there's already studies showing you that the feminine movement did more harm to the woman than it did anything. Right, so we don't even want to get into that. But for a lot of us, this way in the Western, we have these type of ideologies and these concepts in our mind. We have been better than we watched our mothers go through it. We watch our aunts go through it, and and this stuff is put into us, right? And we think that no, ain't no man going to tell us what to do. Ain't no man going to tell us this, this, and that. And we think it's backwards, but that's not Islam. All right, that's not Islam. And just to address the issue, I don't care if it's not your husband's house. All right. Yes, I believe that a man should marry. And have the means of providing shelter for his, 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 his wife. So at least give him a little bit more leverage, right? To have in terms of respect that he supposed to have. I believe that. But if for a reason two people get together and that woman knows that's not his house. And she still married that man and he comes in. He needs to do his due diligence uh, as, as opposed to doing his due diligence. But that woman should not discredit his status or his position based on the fact that that's not his home. That he didn't buy the home. She did not do that. That's why you have to marry the woman with Dean, not beauty. You keep talking about, yeah, I'm looking for a beautiful woman. Go look for a beautiful woman you want. And then all your clothes are thrown out on the streets. And you're being talked to any type of way. And you be dealt with any type of way. Okay, that's what you want. You want a beauty, right? Or do you want Dean? Because a woman with Dean, she's going to fear a lot as a wajal. She's going to understand that she ain't supposed to do that. There's a certain respect level that's supposed to be there. All right? If that's what you want. Okay? So we have to understand that. <laughs> Look what he says. So she had diminished the, the cooking. And he just talks about different things like, you know, if, he, if, if he's a person that likes like to drink coffee or likes to drink tea, she should prepare that. The bed, she doesn't cook more than what's needed. She don't go excessive in cooking. Um, so she must make sure she do things accordingly and in proportion. She don't want to go overboard when she do things. So she want to make sure she don't cook too much. She don't do less of this much or, or that. She don't want to do all of that. This is her responsibility, right? Inside the household. Also from her responsibility is the children. I want to repeat this. Also from her responsibility to the children. This is hadith, by the way. <laughs> this is not nafis. This is hadith. So according to the hadith, right, the woman's responsibility is to maintain the children. That's, that's her responsibility. Now, if you fast forward it to our time, that's not how it's understood. The woman somehow wants the man to take on her role with the children. Or not, he's a deadbeat. Where did you get that from? Not from Islam. Because Islam tells you that the woman's supposed to administer to the children. It doesn't mean that the, the husband doesn't help out. But if the husband is out seeking the provisions, if the husband is making sure everything else is laid down for you and the children so y'all can have those things, then how can he be there making sure he administers the woman? This is why it's a key important to marry a woman who's what? Who have is a mara to salah. She's strong in her akal because she's going to have good adab. She's going to have good manners and she can teach the children. If she does not have those things, she's not going to teach her children correct. She's not going to give them what they need, the right nourishment or nothing. She's going to be the one who's going to be using the excuses as a cop-out that you are not being a father enough because you don't have the children. That's not your role to have the children. Do you understand? That's not your role. Your role in Islam is to provide on all different levels, as we talked about. Your role in Islam is to guide to, to protect, to secure, to maintain. This is your role. This is your flock. This is your responsibility. Not so that you can be there. Okay, I got to make sure the children here and make sure the children that. No, that's our role. You understand? And then a lot of times we see a lot of memes going up. Okay, if the man got to have a car, he got to have a house, he got to have a good job and everything just to marry the woman, then what do the woman have to bring? All right? It's showing you what the woman has to bring. It's showing you the responsibilities of what she's supposed to have. She's supposed to bring good dean and good character. Right? And then she's supposed to fulfill those obligations and those duties that's upon her. Attend to the kitchen. Attend to the household. Attend to this. Attend to that. She's supposed to do that. Right? And interesting enough, I know I'm not living in reality, right? A lot of females for some a lot of females have to go out into the work field. All right. Everybody don't have a husband. Okay. A lot of women have to go out and they don't want to go out. A lot of women don't want to go out. There are women, small small number of women that do want to go out, but there's a lot of women that don't want to work. If they don't have to work, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't work. All right. All right. So we have to understand those issues. Okay, it becomes clear. They don't uh no one have to work, they don't want to work or something like that. But if you can get to a level of being a partner 
with your husband because there's nothing wrong with you giving consultation to your husband. If your husband is working a job that you know, okay, for example, won't cut it, it won't take care, it won't make it easy for where you can tend to the house and tend to the children, then won't you help your husband acquire the necessary skills or the necessary job that will help take care of that so that you can tend to your responsibilities of focusing on the children, of focusing on the house and so forth. Won't you become a partner in that? All right, not he's supposed to figure it out. No, y'all supposed to figure it out because y'all in it together. There's no separation in regards to this. Y'all in it together. All right, this becomes a problem, man, that we don't understand these simple, basic issues. Y'all in it together. All right, he says, So other words, she's supposed to, she was aware about all of these different things. She's supposed to tend as a responsibility to her children, their rectification, the rectification of their situations, all right, their circumstances. Like what do they wear, okay, them wearing, they wearing stuff. Them taking off their clothes, making sure that it's not dirty. All right. Uh, them changing their beds that, that they sleep in, making sure they have clean beds. Um, right. Making sure that they are properly dressed when it's in the summertime. I mean, when it's in the winter. Well, heck of the likewise. She has the responsibility of all of this. Everything that's under in the bait, she has the responsibility of tending to. Likewise, the ab, the servant, the slave, he has the responsibility. His responsibility is taking care of the wealth of his master. And we don't have that in this day and present decent time where we have slaves and stuff like that. So a lot of the things I'm not going to actually touch on, but they have a, they have a responsibility. What comes in the hadith uh, itself. And it's interesting because this hadith covers everyone having a responsibility. So my main thing from this talk is, I one, I wanted to point out the fact that men are not mill tickets in and of itself and that's not what islam promotes and that's not something that islam encourages okay and we understand there's more to that likewise also mentioned women are not just sex objects they are not just desire for their bodies or just for their looks and if you go for a woman just for her bodies and the looks and you miss all of the other stuff you're going to read what you sell pretty much you're going to get what you sell because that's not the purpose of islam and it doesn't encourage us also wanted to highlight uh, the, the 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 importance within this talk showing you the difference between when it comes to finance when it comes to being a provider what are those requirements what are those duties that we have finance provision is a requirement an obligation and a duty it is not sought after marry the rich man you will not find one hadith and i challenge you you ain't gonna find no ayat but you're not gonna find one hadith that encouraged the woman or the guardian anyway the guardian of the woman to find a rich man it's just not gonna happen it's not the objective okay you're not gonna find that likewise you're not gonna find one hadith where you're going to find that the man is encouraged to find the most attractive woman, the most beautiful woman. You won't find it. It don't exist. That's not how Islam looks at things. Don't you see all of the different roles and responsibilities each party got to play? This is, right, this is serious. This ain't no, I just got together because I like you, you like me. Ah, uh, let's make each other happy and please each other in the bed. No, then after that come down, after you offer that high, and that high come down, then what? Right? How the bills going to get paid? How are we going to do this? Which, which school should we send our kids to? What should we teach them? What are your ideas on this? How do you feel about this? How do you view this? Right? And y'all don't have no understanding of that because all of the sparks and everything went away. But you forgot about the main key points. The main key points you should worry about. So Islam encouraged you what? To marry a man of deen and good character. Likewise, it encouraged the man to marry a woman of deen. So that if y'all are both under that, meaning that both of y'all are answer to Allah, and that y'all understand that Allah has laid certain things upon you. Whereby the woman is going to subject herself to the man. The man subjects himself to the laws of Allah. The woman is to make her subservient to that man. Based off the laws of Allah. So the respect level is there. Then they fulfill their obligations together. Do you understand? And then it becomes that working unit that post the work. It can work. And it has worked. But oftentimes we come in with our jacked up stuff that we bring in from outside of Islam or for some culture or from some difference from Western stuff and we bring it in to these marriages and we jack it all up and then we got a nerd to say out of our mouth, I don't want to get married Islamically no more because it was a problem. No, Islam wasn't the problem. It was you. 
I don't care what you say. You were the problem. It wasn't Islam. It wasn't nothing. It had nothing to do with Islam. It was you as the problem. What did you adhere to Islamically? What did you use Islamically to actually help your marriage out? And if you didn't use anything Islamically, or even if you married a person who's Muslim and they didn't uphold their parts to Islam, it still isn't Islam fault. It's the man fault that you probably, or the person that you married. It's their fault that they didn't adhere to that. And this is why it becomes a problem, man. We have to stop playing around and realize what's in front of us. Men are kawam. They are your guardian ancestors. Respect them because Allah gave them that rule. Not every man can fulfill that rule. Do you understand? Not every man can fulfill that rule. This is why your guardian is supposed to seek out the men that do. All right? Just like women. Women are not just sexual objects. All right? Women are not. I don't care how much they make themselves a pillin. Do you want that, that, that? Do you want that headache? Do you want this, this, and that? And if you don't pay attention, the Prophet was telling the majority of the majority of the inhabitants of the hellfire are women. We have to be smart, all right? That doesn't mean that because we look on the ground, we look on social media, it makes the world look small. And you see this person, you see that person. They got their butt job done. They got their bruised, bruised done. And we think like, okay, look at this, this, and that. That girl is not intelligent. She's doing something that is basic, all right? She's selling her body just to get money. That's basically what she's doing. She understands the transaction, what it is. And I have to make myself look way appealing. Way appealing so that I can land somebody that. And then she have a high body count. And this is not the woman that you have to worry about that's going to upraise your kids. Because she's so caught up in the whirlwind that that's what she's worrying about. Likewise, the man. If he thinking that, okay, I got to have the banging car. I got to have the banging this just to get the right woman. You're wrong. You're wrong. You don't need to have all of those things. Yeah, you need to have stability, but you don't need to have the most fanciest things to get the right woman because that's not the right woman you're looking for. You want the woman who praises and worships Allah Azza wa Jal. You want that woman who fears Allah Azza wa Jal. That's the woman you want. That's the woman that's going to build with you. If you look at Asma bint Abi Bakr, now Aisha, even though she also was good because she was a scholar, but Asma bint Abi Bakr tells you she was married to Zubir ibn al -Wam. And it's one of my beautiful basic stories, and I end with this story. She mentioned how Zubir didn't have anything. <laughs> Zubir didn't have anything. When she was married to Zubir, she did not go to the Prophet Wasallam. He doesn't have anything. He cannot fulfill my obligations. I want a khula. Not how we doing this time. That's how you let, let you know what people's goals and intentions are. This is to let you know, right? No, we're going to struggle together, and we're going to also come up together. What makes you think that if I come up, your husband come up, and now you're supposed to enjoy, enjoy the spoils of, spoils of war, you're supposed to have all the benefits, but when he struggle, you ain't supposed to struggle with him? Come on, man. What makes you think that? She understood that. She didn't have nothing, she said. And look what she said. Let's just look at her character. This is out of her own words. She said that I had to, we didn't, I had to knit the bread, right? She had to carry it on her head, and she had to walk, right? There was no camels that she was riding on. And the Prophet ﷺ, she was his sister-in-law, and the Prophet ﷺ seen her carrying this bread on her head. And the Prophet ﷺ stopped. The Prophet ﷺ stopped and offered her a ride to her destination. She declined the ride with her. She declined the ride with the Messenger of Allah ﷺ due to what? This is going to shock you, woman. She declined it because she knew of the ghira. She was worrying about her husband even though he was poor. Look at this. She ain't say her loyalty's now going to be tested. He ain't the right man. I ain't going to respect him. He can't provide for me. She ain't do all that old weird stuff. She understood that her husband have a certain type of ghira. All right? He have a certain type of jealousy. And she declined the ride with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu based on Thinking of her husband, even though they was in that poor circumstances. Later on, he beat, he did come into some riches. I mean, he did come into some more better stances that he can have things. But before then, she did not do all of those things that we see today. Wallahi, we see today. We, I mean, I've been in the masjid for eight years, brothers and sisters. Being an imam for eight years. Watching different things play out. Even in my own self, we're watching people play out. It's not about you marrying a man pocket. All right, and you marrying a woman of beauty, that's doomed. The relationship is doomed if you're thinking that way. All right, y'all going to have ups and downs. If the woman is by herself, she's going to go through an up and down. If the man is by herself, he's going to go through an up and down. This is life. I don't care where you at. You single, you married, you're going to go through an up and down. Your finances is going to go through up and down. Your trials and tribulations is going to go through up and down. That's life. So why now blame the other party because you're going through a struggle part or you're going through a down period? You go, why blame the other party? Oh, it's your fault that we're here. Why? What? That's not what Islam teaches. Why are you going to blame him? 
<laughs> Why are you going to blame her? No, you both want to put your head. The only time you can blame each other in no circumstances is when disobedience is at an all-time high. If you are disobeying the law, because in Islam, we believe that provisions is increased with obedience to Allah. And if and it's decreased with disobedience to Allah. So we can blame one another for being disobedient and hopefully try to advise one another to be obedient again so that our risks can increase. Do you understand? So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us, be in the law, and to give us understanding and to allow us to become to fill those roles that we need to fulfill within Islam If you are a man To allow us to become men with rujula Such as myself I ask Allah for that And if you are a woman Allow a woman to become To the duty of being a woman And whatever I said that was incorrect In any of my translations um, Whether it was the ayat, the hadith Or even the words of the shaykh It's definitely for myself and the shaykh Whatever I said was correct It's from Allah Jalla wa'ala Subhanak Allahumma bihamdi Ashhadu wa la ila anta astakutu Jazakallah khayim I thank you all for tuning in Assalamu alaikum